It's about time you got here, Duchess. The boss has been looking for you. I had to check some coats myself. Now, you know that ain't the kind of work I'm supposed to do. They're all for Jamaica now. Lady Roma goes to the front. Miss Bam is second. The length in Brubberay Bago. Doc Conquest is fourth. At the half, it's Miss Bam by two. Hey, Bago is second. Doc Conquest is third. Hello, Mr. Garrison. Are they all up in Jamaica yet? It's Just coming down the street. Good. Oh, Save myself some money. The length in front of Ray Bago. Miss Bam is fourth. Broad Wink wins it. Doc Conquest is second. Miss Bam. Good morning, Betty. Third. Good morning, Mr. Garrison. Making any bets today? Well, no. The way I have to smarter than people. You mean some horses? No, all of them. Now, Ten horses in a race and 5,000 people are watching. Here are the prices. You put 5,000 people in a race, and you won't get 10 horses to look at them. Seven <laughs> to show. Dark Conquest, 320 to place, 260 to show. Miss Bam, 320 to show. I'd have lost my shirt. Is uh, Bartell in his office? I guess so. What did I tell you? He came in second. <laughs> That's a good word. I'm afraid it's all bad, Vance. Don't tell me. I can guess. The heat's still on. Mm -hmm. Well, it's your job to cool them off. I can't keep operating on $2 bets. I want to give away the food and drinks. Even then, we can't get more than a dozen customers. Now, we're letting in all that'll come, but they're staying away in droves. Say, I'll tell you what's taking away all your $2 customers. What? Sweepstake tickets. <laughs> were you sap enough to buy some? You can pay for your wall with those. You got one chance in a million. You'll end up by being out two and a half bucks. You're just a sucker, Bimmy. Well, there's a million other suckers just like me. And look at the fun you get. A million suckers at two and a half bucks a piece. Hmm. Hey, that's a lot of sugar. Yes, and it's run on the level. Boys, maybe we're in the wrong racket. You mean we're gonna buy some of those things? No. Let me take a look at those tickets, Bimmy. I'll get Gibson the printer on the phone and have him come right over here. I think I see a way to make some money and keep off relief. Might I have your undivided attention for a moment? I'm very busy this morning. I have here a rare antique, a veritable heirloom. Every bit of it, solid gold. Only the other day, I was made a princely offer by a dealer. How much do you want for it? Well, it's really worth uh, 50 or 60 dollars, but uh, I'd willingly take three. There's an inscription on here, and it reads, To my beloved daughter, Betty, on her confirmation, belongs to you indeed. This is not your property. You're quite right. Yes, I'd forgotten. It was left to Betty, and she asked me to raise a little money on it. You know how it is, uh, temporarily inconvenienced. Now, your daughter never gave you that. Now, listen to me, Thomas. I don't mind loaning you a little money on your overcoat which I've kept in mothballs all during the summer, or on some of your clothes, or on your watch. But I not have you taken things to your daughters and bringing them here. Patrick, have you ever found me out in a lie? I assure you, Betty gave me this. All right. You tell her to be bringing it here herself. Hey. Oh, uh, Thomas. Come here. Mm. 
Here you are. Now remember, that's a personal loan. My dear friend, you will never realize how much this means. A few necessities, a little food. Yeah, well, just so long as it isn't a little drink. Oh, how could you think such a thing of me? I am going at once to the grocery store. One more, please. I told you, you're not getting anything more to drink here. Now get out. Come on, be a good fellow. Just give me one more. No. Just one little one. I said no. Just a moment. What will you give me for this? I'll keep that for the bill you owe. Now go on home. That's thievery. A violation of a man's property. You can't do that. Oh, no. Now listen, Tom, I'm getting sick of you. Will you clear out of here? Oh, so I'm not wanted here, eh? Well, there are other places, my good man, where they'd be proud to serve Thomas Tolliver Madison. Well, go ahead. Don't Tom. you dare to lay your hands on me, sir. You forget your position. Go ahead. Go on. You are cool, the Russian. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, that must be him now. I'll go and see. I don't seem to be able to see. Here, let me help you, Bob. No, no, it's no use. It would take things from him. I can't even defend my own property. Did your father speak to you about your account? No. I know we're behind in our rent, well, but... Not only that, but it's a personal loan of five dollars that he promised to return. You must have forgotten to mention that. I'll see that you get it back. And one more thing. I can't have them coming in here intoxicated every day. It'll give my house a bad name. All right, Pop. Just the last step. That's it. I've got him, Betty. Your poor old father is falling to pieces. Helps with age. Oh. I don't know why I bring this on you. Oh, I have no group. Absolutely no group. Maybe this old heart of mine will stop beating someday and then, well, I won't trouble anyone. It's all right, Dad. Go to sleep. How could I sleep? After the terrible things I've done to you. Letting them take that precious heirloom. What did they take away? Your mother's locket that she gave you with her dying breath. Now, to think of it in that vile saloon. Oh, Dad. The only thing she gave me. The last thing of hers I had, and now that's gone. Don't worry, dear. We'll get it back. Don't upset yourself. Okay, Pop. Get some sleep. Yeah. It's no use. I just can't eat. You ought to have something. I know it was tough to take, but he didn't know what he was doing. It's been like this ever since I can remember. He even pawned a wedding ring and drank that up, and now we're locked. Don't, dear, don't, don't. Really? And the landlady told me today that he's been borrowing money from her, too. She's getting tired of it and pressing us for our back rent. Betty, I'll be glad to help you on my next payday. Oh, no, Bill. You need your money. I'll manage somehow. Yes, Bison. Mr. Bartell, would it be possible? Well? Could you give me a raise? <laughs> you sure picked out the wrong time for that. Now, you know how business has been lately, that I'm losing money. But I need it so badly right now. Could you give me an advance in my salary? 
What about that last advance? Did you pay that back? Not completely. And I hate to ask you again, but it's so terribly important. Well, all right. I'll see that you get it before you go home. Thank you, Mr. Bartell. How'd you make out? I got it. I should have told you before, and you wouldn't have had to ask Bartell to get money. What do you mean? I had a hunch, but what a hunch. I'm going to make myself a fortune today, and you could have, too. Oh, I get it. They're a hunch on a horse. Yeah, yeah, but what a hunch. The front. Lord Jeeves is second. Four in hand is third. Missing link, fourth. Listen, last night I had a dream about four little monkeys. And when I woke up, it was just four o'clock. When I sits down to eat breakfast, I finds myself eating four eggs. I counts the block walking to work, and it's just four blocks. And sure enough, when I gets here, there's a horse named Four in Hand it's in the, the fourth race. race. Yeah, how'd you know? I'm psychic. We over the printers? You bet. How do you like these? Some class, huh, boss? Nobody going to mind paying a dollar for those. Well, Gibson did a pretty good printing job. First prize, 150,000. Second prize, 75,000. Third prize, 25,000. <laughs> I could almost believe it myself. <laughs> yeah? Okay, Slicker. You get on that boat tonight. All right, boss. I'll manage it. Don't worry, I'll be checking in a Monopole hotel in Paris in six days. Yeah. Yeah, the first batch will be in the mail as soon as I get there. Now, when do I come back? As soon as we can't sell any more tickets. I'll let you know. Well, that takes care of Slicker's end of it. I'll bet we make a million bucks on this deal. I'll settle for half. If there's anything like that kind of dough, I can close up this place for keeps. Now, the first thing we need is some runners to distribute the tickets. Let's give them, say, uh... Half? No, no, that's too much. Then they'd know it's a fake. There'll be a lot of money rolling in when the snowball starts. Who's going to take care of collections? Got anybody in mind? Yeah. Who? Johnny Strongbox over there. Then I'll be sure nobody will run out with the dough. All right, boys, get going. I've got work to do. You pussyfoot, see Gibson today and tell him to print him as fast as he can. Okay. Well, so long, Vance. Right. Mr. York, how would you like to buy a couple of sweepstake tickets? What sweepstakes that? The Monte Carlo. Only a dollar apiece. A dollar apiece? Well, I can't get stung much there. I'll take two. Oh, no. I've been caught with those fakes too often. But these are on the level. You get your receipt mailed to you from France. That's proof enough. Are you sure? Sure. OK, I'll take a chance. Hey, have you heard anything about this new sweepstakes? The Monte Carlo Derby or something. Yeah, I got me a couple. What can you lose? Only a buck a piece. Yeah, that's the way I figure. And the top prize is 150,000. I'm playing the eighth ball. Oh, it's you. Pete, you've got to give me that locket. Okay, as soon as you pay up your back bill, it's about six bucks. I'll pay you every penny I owe you, but that locket doesn't belong to me. It's my daughter's. And she won't speak to me unless I get it back. Listen, I'll do anything. I'll wash glass. I'll clean the floor. Why, Look, sir, help me. I'll do anything short of murder. How would you like to sell these? You make 20 cents on every one. Why, Pete, this is one. And only a dollar. Why, there are lots of people here in this neighborhood who'll take these. In fact, I think I, I'll take several myself. With what? Oh, well, uh, when I sell a few and get back on my feet. I can get you all of those that you can sell. How many can you use? Oh, I have no doubt I could use 50. I could dispose of them right here in this neighborhood today. Tell your customers I mail the receipts back on these from France. It's a French charity for orphans. Why, the poor little tots. Well, Pete, they have a willing worker in me. OK, Tom. Is that you, Dad? Yes, my dear. This is your old father coming home to his cozy little nest. Well, my dear, 
Our troubles are over. Out with it, Dad. Where did you get the money? You never believed that any of my business deals would come through. Well, I finally met with a man who realized my ability, and he has given me a position that will keep not only me, but the landlady from the door. And I, uh, I have another little surprise for you. Mother's locket. There. I'll never borrow it again. Oh, Dad, you are all right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you didn't rob a bank or something? Oh, quite sure, my dear. And if I may permit myself the vulgarism, everything is on the up and up. I hope so. And now our dinner. Roast turkey, caviar, fatty de foie gras, pickled watermelon, and sundry other delicacies. And the piece de resistance, a bottle of champagne. We are feasting tonight, my dear. You shouldn't have spent all that money. Oh, there's lots more to follow. And it's been a long time since we had a celebration. I can hardly wait to tell Bill. Oh. Hey, what's the rush act for? Hey, Slim. Look, I made it. I passed the examination. Take a look, I'm a postal inspector. Sure enough. I'm a postal inspector. I'm a postal inspector. Hey, wait a minute there. Why, you're the 73rd on the list here. And it'll take maybe a year before you get your appointment. Who cares as long as I know I'm going to get it? I've got to hurry and spread the good news. So long. So long. And good luck. Already? Oh, come in and stop that infernal racket. I did it. I did it. I passed. I'm going to be a postal inspector. Oh, wait a minute, Bill. Let me get my breath. Splendid, my boy. Splendid. I always knew you could do it. Now, may I propose a toast to the future Postmaster General? Oh, Bill, tell me all about it. <coughs> well, uh, I have rendezvous with Mrs. Minnow. I leave you young people together. Oh, Bill, it's been a perfect day. First, Dad gets a job and comes home looking like a millionaire. And now you're going to be a postal inspector. Oh, Bill, how soon? Before long. I'm 73rd on the list. 73rd? Why, that may take a long time. Well, yeah, but now we know it's sure. What do you say, Betty? How about quitting the job and getting married? Oh, not now, Bill. When you get your appointment. Oh, come on, dear. We'll manage somehow. Oh, Bill, I'd love to. But let's wait until we get on our feet first. Now that Dad has it, it won't take long. And it's worth waiting for. Maybe that's best. Put your coat on, come on with me. Why? Where? Never mind. Come on, hurry. We've got three minutes. We can just make it. Make what? Where? What are you talking about? Put your coat on and come on with me. All right, Mysterious. You're the... How important it is to me, lad. Aren't you going to let me in on your little secret? No, sir. This is a secret between Bill and myself. <laughs> I'm just dying of curiosity. You know what curiosity did to the cat. Are you threatening me, Miss Trent? Well, <clears throat> here it is. Eh, Gary, ain't that a beauty, eh? Look at that diamond. I tell you, it's as big as your fist. Oh, it's wonderful. There'll be another ring to follow. Soon, I hope. Well, what are you waiting for? You two are not bashful in front of me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, it takes a woman to start things every time. Mm Ten dollars down, and I'll be in as regular as clockwork to pay off the rest. That's all right, me boy. I ain't worrying a bit. This is one ring that just ain't returnable. That's right, Pat. It's here to stay. I'll take that money. Stay where you are. Don't get smart. Open that safe again. No, sir. I won't open it for nobody. Is that so? Drop that gun! Shut 
him. Oh. Betty, phone the police. You're William Trent? Yes, sir. Where did you get that uh, gun you used last night? It was my service gun, sir. Your service gun? That's too bad. Are you acquainted with Rule 14 in our Postal Employees Code? Yes, sir. Oh, then evidently you've forgotten it. You violated one of our most important regulations. You took a service revolver off duty with you. Yes, sir. It's true, you frustrated a robbery, perhaps saved a life. But in doing so, you broke a department rule. But, Mr. Graham, I didn't know I had it with me. It's the first time I ever made such a mistake. I was in a hurry and I rushed off with it. I realize that. But, Trent, that regulation was written into the code to prevent just such a mistake. Mr. Graham, I know I was wrong. But I just learned that I passed the postal inspector examination and I was so excited that... That you forgot to act like a postal inspector. Maybe you think I'm being too harsh. I've looked up your record and find there isn't a single demerit against you. But, Trent, we realize it's a great temptation to carry a revolver. Therefore, we've made every effort to discourage it among our employees. And I'm afraid all this publicity you got as a hero isn't going to help us any. Therefore, I must make an example of you. I'm sorry, but I, I must suspend you from the service for 90 days. Mr. Graham, you don't realize what this means. I was going to get married. I'm sorry, Trent, but I can't take that into consideration. The suspense will have to stand. That's... tonight, Madison's. Bill, we've been waiting for you. Well, am I in the right place? You certainly are in the right place, my boy. This is all in your honor. Girls, three hearty cheers for our hero. Hip, hip. Wait a minute. I'm not a hero. I'm a washout. What's wrong, dear? Oh, buck up, my boy. This is all for your benefit. For your name is a household word. All that publicity has made you a hero. That publicity cost me my job. Your job? I've been suspended from the service. Why the ingrates? I'll write to the senator. I'll petition Congress. They can't do that to you. They can't, but they did. Well, perhaps I'd better retire to my room and... Uh, Mrs. Minow, if you will permit me. Now, tell me all about it. There isn't much to tell. I broke regulations when I carried my service revolver with me last night. But that's so unfair, Bill. If you didn't have your gun with you, they might have killed Pat Murphy. Yes, but they don't see it that way. Oh, Mr. Graham's right. I did break a strict rule. What do they expect you to do now? Starve, I guess, for 90 days. Oh, don't be so downhearted, Bill. The suspension will soon be over. We'll manage. It won't affect your appointment as postal inspector. That's what I'm afraid of. Betty, every time I try to do something, I get kicked right in the face. We've been trying to get married for two years now, and we're still trying. Oh, don't give up so easily, Bill. Not you. I've heard Father talk that way too many times. And besides, I'm with you always. Well, so you goodbye now. Hello, Bill. Hello, Tim. And by Gary, young fella, it's about time you showed up around here. I got your message a little while ago. Oh, come now, come now, cheer up. Sure, I've heard all about it. And I haven't forgotten what you've done for me. And I want to help you. Thanks, Pat. There's nothing I need now. Poor lad, don't be so modest. Now listen, if it's money you need... I have a little saved up, enough to carry me through. Yeah, well, if it don't stretch, you come and see me. 
Sure, it's mad I am the way they've treated you. People outside the service don't understand. I do. It was really my fault. Yeah? Well, it's a good thing you have a few faults. Or I wouldn't be standing here now. <laughs> and what do you intend doing now, lad? I don't know, Pat. I guess I'll just have to wait till my suspension's lifted. You see, the postal department's the only kind of work I care about. I'd do anything in the world to help you, lad. Oh, excuse me a minute, Bill. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? You know a lot of people in this neighborhood, don't you? Yes, sir, indeed I do. I've been abiding here since I was knee-high to a shamrock. Good. How would you like to make yourself a lot of money selling these? The drawing's two weeks off, and they're only a dollar apiece. No, sir, I'll have nothing to do with sweepstake tickets. Well, if you change your mind, I'll be around again this way in a few days. The first prize is 150000 and your customers get their receipts mailed back from France. You say the receipts are mailed back from France? That's right. Then I'd like to buy one. You see a customer right in your shop. I don't usually sell them retail this way. There's the money. I hope it's a winner. Just sign on the stove, will you? Now, you're sure I'll get a receipt mailed back to me? Positively. And, Mr. Graham, they seem to be selling these all over my neighborhood. Also, they're sending back receipts from France. The department knows about that. We're investigating now. In fact, we know they're a complete fraud. I have a hunch I may be able to get you some valuable information about this ticket racket. I admire your spirit, friend, but we have trained investigators for that. Well, Mr. Graham, I may not be a trained investigator, and I know you have competent men in the department. Still, there is a chance that I may be able to get more information than any of them. How? Oh. Well, everybody in my neighborhood knows that I've been suspended from the service. So why couldn't I act as an undercover agent? Nobody would suspect me of investigating the selling of these tickets. There might be something in what you say. I'll tell you what I'll do. I can't give you an official assignment, but if you bring me any helpful information, you'll find the department is not ungrateful. Thank you, sir. Give him a thousand more. How are his collections? That's fine. Well, how was it today? Couldn't be better, boss. Here's my take, over 3,800. Keep those tickets moving. Seems like the whole town wants them. Yeah, and we're getting new distributors all the time. How long do you think we can keep them rolling? Till we get the last dollar. Well, the top of the morning to you. You seem rather cheerful today. Yes, sir. I bet you've been selling a lot of tickets. Man alive. They've been buying them like shamrocks on St. Patrick's morning. <laughs> Say, tell me. Who's behind this sweepstake thing? Oh, a big charity. Yes, I know, but I mean, uh, who's the fellow that's promoting it here locally? Listen, Murphy, your job is to sell. Don't ask so many questions. Mm. Now speed it up. There isn't much time left before the drawing. Well, I'll do me best. Thanks, Pat. You've been a great help. It's all right, me lad. Don't mention it. If there's anything else I can do to help you, just ask me. Give me a package of those. Thank you. Yeah? Okay, Joe. Remember me? Uh, sure. I uh, feel kind of lucky today. That's what they all say, buddy. Bill, what are 
are you doing here? Well, I just thought I'd stop in and make a bet. I had a hot tip on a horse. I'm surprised at you playing the horses. Oh, They're this going is a sure to the thing. post in the third at Santa Anita. Get your bets down. See you later, Betty. Some more collects. And it's getting hotter all the time. Yeah, and some of the distributors tell me they've been talked to, trying to find out who's running this racket. Then get these tickets to the distributors today. Line up all the cash you can. Tomorrow I'll make the last collection and grab a boat out of here. Hey, boss, there's a guy squawking out here, crabbing about a bet. I tell you, they gave me the wrong ticket. I bet on Silver Dollar. Silver Dollar pays 10 to 2, and I had a $2 bet on it. You're trying to cheat me. I'm not. I want to see the boss. You can't get away with it. Give me a ticket on Wild Goose Chase when I ask for Silver Dollar. We don't want any rumpus now. All right, Joe, let him in. I'll take care of him. What's the trouble? I made a bet on Silver Dollar, and I never noticed it was the wrong ticket. And then when Silver Dollar came in and paid 10 to 2, I fish in my pocket and find that I've got a ticket on Wild Goose Chase. You're trying to cheat me. Give Miss Doe and get him out of here. You say a $2 ticket? Yeah. Well, here's 10. It's just the same as if you'd won on Silver Dollar. Satisfied? Yeah. Yeah, I'm satisfied. And that's why I think you ought to raid the place right away, Mr. Graham. The evidence is all there. Sweepstake tickets, money, records, everything. Nice work, Trent. We had no idea it was Bartell. Then you're gonna raid him? Naturally. I'll turn it over to the inspector in charge of the case. Thank you, Trent. You've done an excellent job. Well, Mr. Graham, couldn't I go along with your men? You see, I know the layout and I'd like to see it through. Well, maybe that can be arranged. Uh, come in and see me in the morning. Yes, sir. And thank you, Mr. Graham. But you still haven't explained the meaning of your performance this afternoon. I was never so embarrassed. What came over you? It was an act. I had a reason, honestly. A reason for making a fool of yourself? For acting like a rowdy in a place like that? Why won't you listen to me? If they thought you were a friend of mine, I'd lose my job. And that's just what you've got to do. Betty, don't go back there tomorrow. Oh, so that's why you did it. I never thought you'd go to such ridiculous means to make me leave Bartels. You'll find out tomorrow what it's all about. Betty, promise me you won't go back. I'll make no such promise. Wait a minute. Where are you going? We had a movie date. I don't know. Maybe to Mrs. Minnow's. At least she has more sense and she's much better company. Hey, with the course of true love never did run spoon. However, it's just as good. I have a little business proposition I want to put before you. I'd better go after her and make her listen to reason. Oh, let her calm down. That's all right. Now, come on, boy. There's something which I think will be of interest to you. Sit down, sit down. What is it, Bob? A gold mine, my boy. A veritable gold mine. A business proposition, 20% commission, and it sells itself. Already, I've sold many hundreds of tickets, and I have... Wait a minute. Did you say tickets? Uh, yes. A lottery. Well, it's a very fine thing, you know, very worthy purpose. The rehabilitation of war-torn orphans. A splendid philanthropy, my boy. Do you mean the Monte Carlo sweepstakes? Oh, yes, of course, you've heard of it. Well, now, my idea was to take you into my sales organization, where you could earn a little money while you're uh, at leisure. How deep are you in this thing? What do you mean, this thing? How dare you make disparaging remarks? Why, it's a fake. A fake? Yes, it's a phony racket that's run locally by that Bartell in his outfit. Where did you get the tickets? Why, I got them from a business associate, Higgins, a splendid fellow. Why, he wouldn't dream of misleading me. Now listen, Pop, I've been working with the postal authorities on this. You just sit tight and throw those tickets in the ash can. Don't try and sell anymore, it'll only get you in trouble. I'm gonna find Betty. A swindle? I, Thomas Tulliver Manson, mixed in a swindle. It's unbelievable. Betty, look, dear. Bill, I'd rather not talk about it anymore. That's because you know I'm right. But you'll apologize when you've heard my side of it. Oh, no, I won't. Now, children, that's no way to talk. Why don't you just count ten and then... and then go and see a picture show? Oh, there's the loveliest picture around the corner. I saw it last night. Oh, it's swoonly romantic. <laughs> now, run along. I'll get your hat and coat. 
Well, at least we won't have to talk in a picture show. You won't need to. I know. Bye-bye. <laughs> Higgins, the traitor, the lion stealing bomb, the vulture. Betrayed by a bartender, hornswoggled by a saloon keeper. Well, Mr. Higgins, we'll see about that. Swindler, robber of widows and orphans. What are you jabbering about? These lying bits of pasteboard. French charity, eh? Philanthropic sweepstake. It's a pack of lies. It's nothing but a charity for the benefit of a gang of pickpockets and pirates. Now listen, Tom, go home and sleep it off. Oh, so you wish me to go home? Well, listen to me, my fine spoken friend. I'm not going to leave here till I get every penny for those counterfeits. I want every penny belong to my friends and neighbors whom I unwittingly hoodwinked. Every penny, mark you, $316. All right, Tom, all right, you'll get your money back. I haven't got that much money here. I have to call up about it. Very good, sir. See that you do. All right. In the meantime, I am going to the Madison quarters. I shall expect the return of every penny within the hour. If not, I'm going to the police. Hello. Hello, Pussyfoot. This is Higgins. Yeah. What? Oh, what was he squawking about? He's squawking his head off and says the tickets are a fake. I can't make him shut up. Somebody's got to do something. I'll be right down. Some old guy by the name of Madison was beating his head off in Higgins' place. Here, said the tickets are phonies. Demands his money, go to the cops. Did you say his name is Madison? Yeah, Tom Madison. See, that's the name of our hat check girl, Betty, Betty Madison. Maybe it's her old man. Oh. You don't suppose she's been saying things? So that's his game. He probably got some information from her, and now he's trying a shakedown. Bring him up here. Leave it to me. Come in. Are you Tom Madison? Thomas Tulliver Madison. What's this you're beefing about in Higgins' place? My good man, if you came here to placate me, you're wasting your time. I know all about these fake sweepstake tickets. I demand my money. Listen, buddy, you've got it wrong. Them tickets is on the level. No one else is squawking. That's because you've drawn the wool over their eyes. But Thomas Tulliver Madison is too clever to be fooled by rascals like you. Listen, buddy. I wouldn't advise you to take that tone with me. Oh, you wouldn't, wouldn't you? Well, let me tell you, sir, there's a justice for people like you. That'll be enough out of you. You'd better come along with me. We'll show you what happens to squealers. No, oh, adding due rest to your other crimes, eh, sir? Try to... Now, stand back. Stand back. I wasn't the finest swordsman of the Navy for nothing. Put that foolish thing down. Put it down, I say, and get going. Oh, so you add the coward's weapon, the gun, to your other accomplishments. Like the scorpion you are. Very well, sir. I have put this foolish thing down, as you say, and I'll accompany you peacefully. But under protest, mark you. Quit Gavin and walk. <laughs> Will you keep that pernicious weapon out of my ribs? Get over there. This is him, boss. He keeps shooting off his mouth. Yes, and I have continued to voice my protests, even in this den of thieves. What's your game? Yelling so we give you some hush money? I want no money except what belongs to the people you've swindled. Who gave you the idea we're swindling anybody? It wasn't your daughter Betty, was it? Now you keep my daughter's name out of this. She was an innocent party to your skullduggery. An innocent party, huh? <laughs> Don't try to kid me. She's probably filled your mind with a lot of funny ideas. My daughter told me nothing. In fact, I got it from a better source than that. I was made aware of your iniquities through my future son-in-law. He's a postal inspector. Oh. So that's how it got out. He's a postal inspector, and Betty's your daughter. Now, I told you to keep my daughter's name out of this. Sit down. I will not sit down. You heard him. Sit down. I will not sit down. I tell you. Sit down. Yeah. 
you still love me? Mm, with reservations. Good night. Good night. Oh, I'll say good night to your dad. Why, the door's open. Dad? He isn't here. Maybe he's over at Mrs. Minnow's. Nobody's home. I wonder where he could have gone. Maybe he went for a walk. Well, I hardly think so. He's not around. Here's his cane. He left it behind. Oh, something must be wrong. Oh, now don't get so excited. But it's not like Dad. He's never gone anywhere, no matter what his condition, without his cane. Well, he did this time. He's probably at the Cartwheel Cafe right now. Let's go see. No, let me go. You stay here. I want to go with you. I have a feeling something's happened to him. I refuse to be browbeaten by a pack of conniving cut purses. Thomas Tulliver Madison is not a man to be lightly shunted aside in a matter of honor. Now, before springing into action, I demand for the last time the return of the money you embezzled from your entrusting victims. Money extorted in the name of sweet charity to further your nefarious enterprises. Let's not waste any time getting out of here. Oh, no. You're not getting out of here with all the money you extorted from my unsuspecting neighbors and friends. Pussy, what? Go over to the hotel and get my bags. We'll get everything ready here. We'll make a break for it. No, you don't make a move. Only over my dead body. What'll I do with this guy? We haven't time to fool with him now. You're not going to put a foot outside of this place, I... Why, you scoundrel, I... Get after those bags. It's after hours, I can't let you have anything. All we want is some information. Has my dad been in here? Yeah. And if he never comes back, it'll suit me fine. What happened? Well, he came in here shaking his walking stick in my face and demanding the money back. He turned in for the sweepstake tickets. Are you sure he had his cane with him? You bet I'm sure. He almost ruined my bar pounding on it, and he called me a crook. Whatever made him do that? I don't know. He got an idea those tickets he was selling weren't on a level. And he blames me. Did you give him the money back? I didn't. I got in touch with the bird that gave him to me. Let him handle it. Who'd you call? Now, what difference does that make? They're taking the money over to him, over to his house. All right. Thanks, Higgins. Sorry to have bothered you. What does it all mean? He's in trouble yelling his head off. Bartell's behind the sweepstake racket. I found that out this afternoon. Oh, so that's why you were there. Yeah, and I told you, Dad, so he wouldn't go on selling tickets. But now it looks like he's got himself in a spot. Do you think Dad would go right up to Bartell? He might, if he's on a rampage. If they thought he was going to spill the beans, they'd do anything to stop him. I'm going up there. Then I'm going with you. No, you're not. There might be trouble. But if Dad's in trouble... I'll I... get him out of it. There's no telling what might happen. Now, you go home and wait for me. But you can't get into Bartell's, and I have a key. Give it to me. No, I'm going along. All right. about all these tickets? Bring them along. Don't leave any evidence. Here, take these two. I wonder what's keeping Pussyfoot with those bags. We gotta get out of here quick. Is Dad in there? I think so. Go out and phone Mr. Graham at the department number. They'll connect you wherever he is. I'll call him from here. No, no, no. It isn't safe. Use the payphone outside. Tell him that Bartell is running out and I'll try and hold him until he gets here. All right, Bill, but do be careful. I will. Now hurry. Yes, Mr. Graham, he's there now. I don't know the number of men Bartell has. Yes, that's the address. I'll be watching for you. I have a key to let you in. And please, hurry.
Where are the other bags? Down in the car with Joe. Okay. Start packing. All right, let's get going. What about the old man? No, leave him here. He'll come to and find his way out. He's been out a long time. You think he's done for? Well, I hope not. We don't want anything to do with murder. Better take a good look at him. He's out cold, but he'll probably be all right. Oh, all right, you scoundrels. Here we are. Get your hands up. Get back, you ruffian. Oh, now, look here, Madison. Quiet. I'll do the talking. Line up, you rabble. Here, get go! Here we go! Get back, both of you! Don't make a move! Are you hurt? No, not much. Come on in, you refuge! Come on in! I don't care how many of you there are. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's Inspector Graham of the Postal Department. I think you'll find everything in those bags. Take them away. Dad, are you all right? Why, certainly, my dear. A tiff like this is a mere frolic for Thomas Tulliver Madison. But uh, I could use a little stimulant. I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. I didn't mean to go against your orders, but everything happened fast. There's no getting away from it. You always have a gun at the right time. I hope you don't think I'm violating the rules again. This isn't my gun. It belonged to them. Don't worry, Bill. You've done a great job. Come down to the office tomorrow, and I'll give you a gun you can carry as often as you like. You know, uh, postal inspectors are on duty 24 hours a day. Did you hear that? I'm a postal inspector. Oh, Bill. My boy. Let me be the first to congratulate you. My dear, this demands a celebration. Well, my dear lady, there I was, surrounded by 25 of the most villainous looking ruptions I have ever seen in my life, all most foully intent on taking my life. Hoodlums to the left of me, hoodlums to the right of me. <coughs> a stimulant. Right away, right away, Tommy. <coughs> it's those, those infernal tubes of mine. <coughs> oh, I brought this. It's what the general used to take when he needed reinforcement. Go on, drink it down, every drop of it. I guess she'll take care of him. <laughs> <laughs> 